Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. I'm Bobby Lewis. The perfect way to spend a holiday dedicated to the color green or well, watching some golf, of course. Many of the players that teed it up in the final round of the Tampa Bay Championship didn't hold back. The final round featured some of the lowest scores of the tournament. We go out to Innisbrook where it was an absolutely beautiful, perfect, picture perfect day out there, light breeze, and some St. Patty's Day luck. Check out Kevin Strelman on number three, already birdied on number one, chips in from off the green to take a lead, eight under par. We knew he'd be in the mix, but we had no idea Boo Weekly would be. He started the day even par, but birdied five out of the last Last seven holes on the back nine and shot a 63. That's how you get to the top of the leaderboard. Back to Streelman on 13. He's tied with Weekly. He plays his tee shot in close about six, eight feet from the hole. Knocks it down. Minus nine right there. It's crunch time now for Streelman. Can he put it away on 17? He can. He birdies and he feels it. Boo knows that and his chance has pretty much slipped away right there. And on 18, all it takes is a par for Streelman, who tames Copperhead to win his first PGA Tour event. Very solid ball striking all week. Um, AJ and I kept it very simple. We just were picking targets and picking the right club and then just swinging and just letting go of results. Um, we were meditating on a lot of scripture together. We were um, <coughs> singing together. We were having fun. And that's when I play my best is when I'm just enjoying myself. I said I'm thankful for the opportunity. If I shoot 80 or 60, it's just going to be fun to be out there and, and enjoy it. And um, this time I was able to finish it off. Here's a look at the final scores. Heck of a day for Boo Weekly, who started tied for 31st, ends in second. Cameron Tringali just missed his first tour win. Luke Donald won here last year. He finishes third, followed by Sergio Garcia and Tim Furyk. Next stop, Bay Hill in Orlando next weekend at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. And every time you play, you probably go out to the green, snatch the flag out of the ground, and just toss it aside while putting. Well, flags are kind of an afterthought for a lot of people, but not at Innisbrook, especially not at number 16. As 10 Sports' Chris Fisher reports, the flag on top of that pin is tended much more carefully than the rest. It's the most unique hole at the Tampa Bay Championship this week. Not because of the water or the dog leg right, nor the pin placement, but it's what sits atop the pin that makes it special. The American flag marks the hole at the 16th green, making it the only hole on the course where the red, white, and blue waves. And tending the flag isn't a caddy, it's a United States military member. Every chance that the uh, golfers get to come back down here and just say thanks for your service is a great, just, you know, just appreciates that even those who are, you know, more fortunate others are so appreciative of what we do, so it's, it's a great honor. And the honor of meeting the golfers and caddies is just one of the perks. It's just meet what you know, meet these guys and just how humble they are to say thank you. And they've shaken hands. That one has given me a golf ball, which is pretty pretty exciting. <laughs> I'd be sure to take my hat off, shake their hands, and thank them for their service, and uh, give them whatever I you know, what I can of support and thanks. And you know, we can't do enough for our men and women. That's uh, bottom line. And no matter if they made a birdie or a bogey, each golfer that walks by makes it a point to say thank you to the service men and women watching over the flag and serving our country. I uh, know they're they're having a good time out here being out here, but but we need to uh, show our support of them and, and say thank you when they're doing that because they're they're fighting for our country and, and doing a lot more and we're just out here playing golf. Believe it or not, golf and combat both require the ability to focus as Jerry Kelly revealed to one soldier looking to better his game. The hardest thing for uh, a service man or woman to do is to actually engage to look at where you're being fired at and engage and return fire and I'm like just pretend that the pin is shooting at you and you're going to do just great. <laughs> this pin was under plenty of fire during the tournament, but under the watchful eye of the service men and women guarding it, the flag never touched the ground. And many golfers hope this is a custom that will catch on at every tour stop and not purely make the 16th hole at Copperhead unique. Reporting from Innisbrook, Chris Fisher, 10 News. Very cool. As great as this year's event was, its future in this area is a bit uncertain. Everbank stepped in at the last moment and put its name on this year's tournament as a presenting sponsor. But without a long-term financial partner at Innisbrook, the Tampa Bay Championship could go away. But Sheila Johnson vows not to let that happen. This week, the woman who owns the resort and some of the tour players expressed just how badly they want to hold on to this tournament. There's a lot of reason for optimism. And if you and know anything about me, I'm like a dog on a bone and I'm not gonna give up on this. <laughs> I'm really not. We have people that are interested. We have companies, corporations that are interested. And it's my job and it's what I owe Innersbrook, the membership, the Tampa Bay community that I wanna keep 
a tournament here at Ennisbrook. Hopefully Everbank will uh, take on this tournament for more than a year. That's what we're hoping for. That's the main thing. Oh, well, that was huge for us. I mean, sponsorship in general was something that we were looking for, and, uh, and they stepped in at the uh, at the 12th hour and, uh, and came through, and we're hoping to keep them around for a while. The local community loses out. You know, the, obviously anyone who's a big golf fan now has to travel an hour and a half up the road or head to Miami or, you know, um, or head to South Florida to, um, to West Palm to, to view that the Honda. But, yeah, it would be a loss for the local community, and, and, and I hope the powers to be that we can keep it here. For basketball fans, today is like waking up on Christmas morning as a kid, and inside your stocking, the best three-week stretch in sports. The NCAA tournament tips off this week, and three teams from Florida will be dancing. Florida Gulf Coast, Miami, and the Florida Gators. Gulf Coast won the Atlantic Sun title. Miami trying to win its first ACC tournament title game today. Facing North Carolina, Shane Larkin was the star. The point guard hits the three, part of his career-high 28 points. Miami led, but Carolina stormed back. Three ball goes in, and the heels are up three, but Larkin kept battling. Two perfect passes for dunks in the closing minutes, and Miami wins 87-77. They take the ACC title. That gives them the number two seed in the East region. They open the NCAA tournament against Pacific on Thursday. You see Marquette's also in this region out of the Big East Conference. So is Illinois and Colorado. You've got to figure that maybe the Canes can make it at least to the Sweet 16 with this draw, depending on how things shake out. How about the Gators? They can win the SEC tournament. Ole Miss needs to win it or else they miss out on the NCAA tournament. Gators looks good early. Kenny Boynton hits the three and Florida's up 31 to 20. But they're called the Ole Miss Rebels for a reason. They refuse to, refuse to fade. Big dunk there ties the game at 43 and in the closing minutes, a three for the Rebels. Puts them up and then check out the fast break. The spin, the layup. Gators miss in the final seconds. They lose 66-63. Ole Miss in the tournament for the first time since 02. Now, Florida's loss probably dropped them a little bit. They end up with a three seed in the South region. They open the NCAA tournament against Northwestern State on Thursday. These are the teams that stand in their way. Gators would face either UCLA or Minnesota in the round of 32 and potentially Georgetown in the Sweet 16. Georgetown faces Florida Gulf Coast in the first round. I got a feeling tomorrow will be the least productive day of the week. Everyone will be filling out these brackets at work. But try it this way. Log on to WTSP.com slash hoops and play with us. You can put your picks up against the 10 News Sports Department and your buddies. Fill out a bracket. Can you do it better than me? Uh, probably. You could even win an iPad. Yeah, it's that cool. Coming up, we were two outs away from a perfect game in Fort Myers today. That is not lucky at all. See who saved the day when we come back. Welcome back. There's some new Buccaneer beef on defense. Tampa Bay signed two-time Pro Bowl safety Deshaun Goldson this week. He played in the Super Bowl last month with the 49ers. Now he brings toughness and attitude to a defensive secondary that was last in the league in pass defense a season ago. And that was not the only move this week by Greg Schiano's guys. The defensive line took a big hit. Michael Bennett opted to leave Tampa Bay and sign a free agent deal with Seattle. Roy Miller is now a Jacksonville Jaguar, and the Bucs traded Aurelius Ben to the Eagles. Now, Arbiter also ruled that cornerback Eric Wright's $7.75 million salary for 2013 is not guaranteed. Now, one team owner in the state of Florida says he wants Tim Tebow on his team. I know it's not the Bucks, it's not the Dolphins, nor is it the Jaguars. It's actually the owner of the Arena League's Orlando Predators. He said he has a contract ready for the former Gator star to sign. Brent Bucci says Tebow can improve in the AFL just like Kurt Warner did. And if you remember, that worked out for Warner, who went on to win two Super Bowls. So you never know. Yesterday, the Rays nearly got in a fight with the Red Sox. Today, they didn't really put up a fight at all. Maybe it was those fancy green uniforms. John Lester strikes out Evan Longoria, swinging in the first, and then in the fifth, Jose Lobatone just looking. Six no-hit innings for Lester. Former Ray Johnny Gomes in the sixth. Two runs, single to left, makes it 4 nothing Red Sox. He just looks weird in that uniform, doesn't he? To the ninth now. Rays don't have a hit until this. Infield single by Jason Bourgeois. Whew. Man, games don't count, but a no-hitter certainly would have been ugly. Rays lose 5-1. to one. Lightning snapped a five-game losing streak at home last night after beating the Carolina Hurricanes. They'll try to avoid starting a new losing streak tomorrow. Tampa Bay hosts Philadelphia at the Forum before hitting the road for three straight games. Bolts are six points behind the Hurricanes for that final playoff spot with just 20 games to play. So what else is going on this week? Ah, not much. Tuesday, Tampa Bay Storm Media Day. Their season starts on Saturday. Wednesday, Willie Taggart takes the field for the first time as USF's head coach. And the NCAA tournament, of course, tips on Thursday. And then this weekend, the Honda Grand Prix roars to life in downtown St. Pete. 
Gators lose on the diamond today. Knowles and Bulls both win. That's a wrap on this week. Good luck filling out those brackets. I know I'll need it. Wake up in the morning show at 5 a.m. I'm Bobby Lewis. Have a great week.